So we are officially in Q4, and I know that you are absolutely focused on hitting your end of year goals and really maximizing what could be the most lucrative time of the year for your business. And to do that, you really have to take this step back and really examine how everything is converting currently in your business so you know where to improve. Hello and welcome to another episode of Digital Marketing Made Simple. I'm your host, Jenny Lyon, and today I'm so excited to jump into troubleshooting your sales funnel like a pro, figuring out what is holding your business back so we can jump right on into it. So as I was saying, you really want to take some time to step back and kind of evaluate what's been working, what hasn't been working in your business so far this year. But how do you figure out what to do next? So today I'm going to walk you through exactly what to look for and what I look for when doing a sales audit, especially a sales funnel audit. And we do these all the time for our clients. And I really want to dig in and explain what I'm looking for and what I even suggest to fix the most common issues. All right, so first things first, you really have to collect the data and know your business, right? And to do this type of troubleshooting, especially when it comes to sales funnels, you really do have to understand the basic analytics from your business logistics and know how those compare to your goals and the standards of your specific industry. So I'm a huge believer in Every business operates differently. That's one thing I tell my clients all the time. I've been doing this for over 20 years now, and I can have two clients that are in the same industries, have same types of products or services, but the marketing will be totally different for each of the businesses. And, you know, that's just how it is. Every single business is so unique, just like the person who runs that business. So success is going to really look different for every single business. And what works for say a dog training course definitely probably won't work for an online business coach. And that's okay. You know, instead of adding confusion to the mix by giving really target figures for those metrics, I really suggest that you look to your overall business performance and compare that to your goals and then use that as your starting guideline. Next up is no new leads. Ugh, the one thing we never want to hear in marketing, right? So you've put that opt-in form on your website. You're getting it out on social media. You're letting all your followers know about it. You have a newsletter. You have all these free resources, but maybe you're not seeing any new opt-ins. Why? Well, number one, no more newsletters, please. You know that old saying, you got to give a little to get a little? That definitely applies here. Just because your offer is free does not mean that every person who comes to your website is going to want to, you know, get on your email list and have you come into their private inbox. Almost 100% of the time, unless your online business is, I would say, just a blogging type business, then I never recommend that you put the opt-in on your website as the newsletter. You know, it's too generic. You see that so many times where someone will have this little generic opt-in at the bottom of their website that says, sign up here for my newsletter. No, 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 no. No one, most people are not going to opt into that. Again, unless maybe it's content, you know, just blogs and you want to stay up to date on that. But people like newsletters but not enough to give their email address as the only reason to get on your newsletter list. This is where you need a lead magnet. So number two could be that you have a lead magnet, but it's lacking. So if you're promoting that lead magnet and it's not converting, then your lead magnet isn't appealing to your ideal audience or the way that you're promoting the lead magnet doesn't really explain how the lead magnet solves a problem for your audience or it doesn't explain it in a way that feels obtainable to them. So it's time to sit down and rewrite that lead magnet or rewrite the copy promoting the lead magnet. And then number three is to test the tech. This is rarely a problem, but it's definitely worth confirming that your opt-in form 
is subscribing the new lead to your email list in a correct manner and sending what it's supposed to send. So I said that's rare, but it definitely happens. I've had in the past clients come to us because they say, I have this lead magnet, it's not converting, I need help with it. And we dig into things and the links all in the lead magnet aren't working. So it's definitely worth testing. Always test anything that you create just to make sure that the process is really seamless for your audience when they subscribe. Next up are low email open rates. So once your contact gets added onto your email list, what's next, right? The most common complaint that I get from clients is that people aren't opening the emails that they send. So this always will tell me one of three things. One, the list is fatigued. So it's really tempting to look at your email list as this really infinite resource of leads that can become sales at any minute. And it's even more tempting to believe that the more emails that you send out, the more likely that you are to turn those leads into sales. And that definitely could not be further from the truth. Timing is really so important when it comes to email marketing and having an email marketing strategy that makes sure that you're nurturing those leads before you try to sell to them is really essential. It really is. Number two is that maybe your email subject lines are just too boring. You know, there are at least, you know, a hundred new emails popping into your ideal client's inbox every single day. So are you standing out? You know, sometimes it's really as simple as adding emojis to the subject line if that fits within your brand, but also using personalization, you know, make sure you use their name in the subject line or creating engaging previews within the text that can make a huge difference. So I use a lot of different tools to test subject lines and you can Google that. There's a lot of great ones out there that will kind of give you an idea of how your subject line is going to perform. So I would definitely give that a go. Number three is to rally for re-engagement. So this is one of my favorite email marketing strategies where you use a re-engagement campaign. There's really something so satisfying about seeing new life being breathed into a fatigued email list. So re-engagement campaigns often do require quite a bit of strategy to pull it off successfully and the acceptance that some leads might completely fall off the list. You know, sometimes I'll have clients where they're like, no, I don't wanna lose anyone. But if the list is fatigued and the list isn't converting, then it makes sense. You really wanna know that the leads that you do have will continue to open your emails and interact and are actually qualified and interested, which is definitely worth it. So I did a podcast not too long ago where I really dug into those common email mistakes, you know, the reasons that people aren't converting when they're added to your email list. So you can always jump over and check that out. I'll put the links in the show notes for you. Okay, next up is that your landing pages are not converting. So if you've invested in a really beautiful landing page, you know, you're promoting the offer, but you're not seeing sales come in or you're not seeing the level of sales that you are expecting. What's happening? Why? So here I really wanted to assume that visually your landing page is on point. I'm just going to assume that, you know, it communicates your brand. It truly makes you look like a professional. And if you're unsure about that part, then it's definitely worth having someone else look at that and give you the perspective on it. But we'll say that the visuals for what we're talking about today, we're not going to take that into account. What we will be talking about is empty words and promises. So your landing page copy is just as important, if not more important than the visual aspects of the landing page. So if overall that landing page is visually looking really good, then it could definitely be that the words on the page are blocking your cells. So my team always puts this really huge emphasis on story-based copywriting. You know, that's something that's really important to us. And it means that your copy is coming from a place of providing value and transformation for your ideal customer. It's not about just outlining a transaction. You know, does your landing page relate to your client's 
or ideal client's pain points and desires, then you can explain to them how that offer is really going to close that gap from where they are today, which is point A, to where they want to be, which is point B. And if not, then that's the time where you really want to look at rewriting that landing page copy. Number two is what's in it for them. So your landing pages are not this free space for you to just talk about how great you are, how great your business is, or how great your offers are. That acronym, you know, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for them, is simply what it is. What is in it? in it for them, you know, or what's in it for me if I'm the consumer. And it's something that you really have to keep in mind when you're creating landing pages. Your potential customer wants to land on your landing page and know how your offer is going to make their life better. They want to know that your offer is the solution to their problem and they want to know how it's going to fix and be a good fit for them right now. So if your sales page copy doesn't really communicate what's in it for them, then they're definitely going to click off. And then number three is to disconnect with ideal clients. So this is really the way that there's some sort of disconnect, right? I see that a lot, where either your landing page isn't relating to their pain points and their desires. Maybe you're not speaking the type of language that they need to hear that really makes your offer sound like something that they absolutely want to invest in. But either way, knowing who your ideal client is inside and out will prevent this. You know, I suggest really going back to the ideal client avatar information that I've shared over and over and over again to make sure that you're really relating to them. Okay, next up is one hit wonders. So congratulations, you know, you're making sales, but what if every single person is only buying once? You know, each new sell is coming from a new lead every single time. And if you are stressed out about where that new and next lead is going to come from, then this is definitely for you. There could be a few potential problems that we see a lot. Number one is what's my next step? So throughout every step of the funnel, you should really be thinking about what the next step is for that customer once they purchase your offer. So if they come into your funnel and they purchase your low ticket offer, what is the next level, right? What is that mid ticket offer? You know, what is that next layer of problem solving for them? Once you know what the next steps are, then you really have to understand what their next steps are going to be. So you have to make it really crystal clear for them that you have more services or products that will appeal to them and be a solution for their problems. You want to make sure that you have really clear call to actions throughout at least three to five times throughout that post purchase email sequence that really promotes that next offer strategically timed, of course. Number two is underdeveloped funnels. So this is something we see a lot as well. You know, I've seen a lot of businesses that come in to work with us that have a few offers, but they're not actually related. So they don't really have a sales funnel. They just have this kind of runged ladder that eventually runs out of options for their customers. So if this describes your business, that's okay. We can fix it. But right now you're missing out on a lot of sales. By using market research and even your own expertise, you know, you can research and brainstorm different ways to provide more value, more support, more solutions for your customers. So for example, say that you sell candles, you know, you could create a bundle or even a curated catalog of gift baskets for weddings, housewarmings, you know, those type of things that you could promote. So you would go from selling just one or two candles to potentially selling five to 10 candles at one time. Another example is from my own sales funnel. So we have a social media ads funnel, right? Where you can purchase a social media advertising audit, a social media advertising strategy session, and then different tiers of done for you social media advertising management and strategy. So of course those Audits are going to be lower level investments and subsequently they will take much less time from my team where the full service ads management is a much larger investment and it takes more time for my team. 
but the different tiers really help to cater to each level of readiness that we find our clients at. And it gives our clients that logical next step when they're ready for it. And number three is you went ghost. You know, you've made the sell, you delivered the product, then crickets. You know, your new customer has been put back into your email newsletter pool with everyone else to be nurtured, right? And when that happens, most likely they won't purchase again. Why? Well, you really have to have a post purchase post purchase nurture sequence for each and every offer that you have. It doesn't have to be 50 emails long, you know, nothing crazy like that, but there does need to be a strategy and a purpose for every single email. So you really want to provide that like, no trust factor to each and every new customer. And then we have our final troubleshooting steps. So these are definitely the top complaints that I get from clients when we first start working with them inside of our digital marketing agency. And nine out of 10 times, we can spot really quickly where the opportunities for improvement lie. And hopefully, if you're experiencing some of these same types of problems in your own online business, then you will walk away today with some actionable steps and areas that you can really focus in on to create those and increase those new sales. And I'm also aware that you may have just listened to this whole podcast and you feel like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know. You know, there are so many ways that my business could be better, but I don't have the time. I don't have the mental energy. I don't know where to start. I don't want to do it myself. You know, the good news is, is you don't have to. So we work with online businesses of all success levels. We have clients that are just starting out. We have clients that are scaling up and we really create marketing strategies that are proven to work for our clients where they're at today to get them to where they want to be. So you definitely don't have to DIY everything yourself. You could collaborate with us on certain things that make sense for you, where you might not have the time, the energy, the know-how, the sanity <laughs> to take care of those types of projects. So if you're interested, please always schedule a free consultation. We are um, taking new clients now, which is exciting. So you can always do so at jennylion.com forward slash chat. We can take a look at your overall business, you know, and kind of audit what you already have, find out where the gaps are, and really put a strategy into play that is going to not only skyrocket your Q4, but that will set you up for success for the new year. And who doesn't want that? All right. Well, that's what I have for you this week on this episode of Digital Marketing Made Simple. If you have any questions at all, please reach out. My door is always open, but I'll see you next time. Have a good one. See you soon.